Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again for another uh, discussion of respiratory physics. Uh, this is the Ancient Scholar channel if you're tuning in. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to talk about, or now I'm going to talk about another gas law. We've talked about Boyle's law, Charles' law, we've talked about how to convert um, Celsius to Kelvin. Just add 273 because 273 Kelvin is 0 degrees Celsius, so real nice conversion factor there. Um, we've talked about Boyle's law, and Charles' law, and it, of course we talked about the ideal uh, gas equation uh, much earlier on. And all of these laws are subsequently derived uh, from the ideal gas equation. So, what I'm going to talk about today is Gay-Lussac's law, and uh, how do I keep this straight? Well, if you remember, Boyle's balloon, Charles Celsius, and Charles' law is volume and temperature with the assumption that pressure remains constant. So pressure doesn't change when we use Charles' law. And basically it's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, or if I cross multiply that and rearrange it, it's V1 times T2 equals T1 times V2, V being volume, T being temperature. Basically what that says is as temperature increases, volume increases. As temperature decreases, volume decreases and vice versa. And you're more than welcome to watch the, the video on that if, if, if you need some refreshing. So Charles Celsius is how I remember this, and I remember Gay-Lussac's law as being Charles' gay brother. Gay-Lussac's law is Charles' gay brother. And in that, I mean that they are related, in, in conceptually related. And the formula for Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So, pressure 1 over temperature 1 equals pressure 2 over temperature 2. And what remains constant in Gay-Lussac's law? Well, what remains constant <coughs> is volume. Whereas in Charles' law, pressure remains constant. So you can see how there's that, that relation and it's real easy to get these mixed up. I just remember that Charles talks about volume, Gay's talks about pressure, and that Gay-Lussac's is Charles' gay brother. They're related. They go hand in hand. Very similar concepts. Okay. We can also rearrange this by cross-multiplying to come up with uh, P1 times T2 equals T1 times P2. These are equivalent statements. Okay, so how do we uh, how do we work through a, a Gay-Lussac's law problem? Again, we need to realize or recognize that Gay-Lussac's law is talking about pressure and temperature, and that if it, it's asking about volume and temperature, that's a, that's Charles' law. Different calculation. So most of the most of the, the problem comes in in deciding which gas law to use. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and uh, just give you guys a. Um, we will do um, we'll do a, a conceptual problem here. Let's say that I have a tank here, and uh, maybe it's an autoclave. Autoclave uses high pressure and heat and steam to, to kill germs and to sterilize equipment. Um, Gay-Lussac's law definitely applies here. <coughs> um, and let's just say that the initial temperature inside of here, this tank, We'll say it's 25 degrees Celsius, okay? And the pressure inside of here is 1.5 atm, atmospheres, okay? And remember, an atmosphere, 1 atm equals 760 millimeters of mercury, right? Um, every, so just to know what the conversion is, and just as a side note, every 33 feet of water, approximately every 33 feet of water, equals one atmosphere. So if I go under 33 feet of water, I'm actually under two atmospheres, because I have an atmosphere above me, and then another atmosphere um, of the water. If I go 66 feet of underwater, I'm under three atmospheres. That's just kind of a nice little pearl of knowledge uh, that'll help you out. And then what I do, <coughs> Okay, so this is condition A, right? At 25 Celsius, 1.5 atmosphere, atmospheres of pressure in there. Now, I turn that autoclave on, <coughs> and it heats up. I heat that thing up. 
and the new temperature is 323 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's smoking hot inside of there. And what I want to know is what is the new pressure? What is the new pressure inside of there? So let's just go ahead and put our formula in. So we know our temperature one and our pressure one. Remember, I need to convert Celsius to Kelvin, so I add 273, and this becomes 298. Add 273 here, and this becomes 596 Kelvin. Okay, and we can leave the atmosphere as it is as long as we use the same units. All right, so let's go ahead and plug the formula in. If you remember, it's P1 over T1, or we'll just make it T1 doesn't really matter. T1 over um, P1 equals T2 over P2. All right. We'll just go ahead and, uh, and use that. Or you know what? Just to avoid any confusion, let me just go ahead and use what I had originally stated. Um, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. We'll just use that just to avoid any confusion. So condition A here, B here. So my initial pressure is 1.5 atm atmospheres. My T1, my starting temperature is 298 Kelvin. My P2 is going to be X, I don't know what that is, and my T2 is 593 degrees Kelvin. So now what do I do? Well I just cross multiply, right? So 1.5 times 593 equals, cross multiply here, 298 times x, okay? So now I need to get x all by itself, so I divide this side by 298. I also have to divide this side by 298. So x equals 1.5 times 593 divided by 298. And x is going to equal, in this case, so I can go ahead and do the math, plug that into my calculator, even do it by hand, and it will come out to be 3 atm, 3 atmospheres. Now let's say that I want that pressure in millimeters of mercury. Well, I could just come over here, and I could do 760 equals 1 atmosphere, and multiply that by 3. So 3 times 6 is 12. Okay, 3 times 7. 21 plus the 1 is 22. So that gives me 2,220 millimeters of mercury. The very last thing that I want to do is I just want to check and see if, the intu if this logically and intuitively makes sense. So what happened between condition A and condition B? I increased the temperature. So I should expect the pressure to increase. Does my pressure increase? I started at 1.5 atm and I ended at 3 atm. Um, so absolutely my pressure increased uh, pretty significantly, it actually doubled. And that's what we see in a, in a real autoclave, is the pressure would increase. Uh, another thing they love to throw on tests is if you leave an oxygen tank out in the sun and it warms up and the pressure on the gauge increases, what law is that? And a lot of people are like, oh, it's Charles Law. No, it didn't ask anything about the volume, it asked about the pressure inside of the tank. The pressure increased, so it's actually Gay-Lussac's Law. I actually had that question on a, um, a flight nursing exam, a board exam.